Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System and my review conclusion for the Kanor Audio AI 1.10 tube integrated amplifier that I've had in my review system for a good number of weeks. And sadly, it's too big and too heavy to have on the desk there behind me. So I'm just going to show you some sexy B-roll as we go through this review. Now, in many regards, this is a very easy product to review because it's just an amplifier. Let me repeat that, it's just an amplifier. It's not also a DAC, a Bluetooth connection, wireless streaming, you know, multi-module thing. It's just an amplifier, but a really very good one. Kanor Audio are a Slovakian hi-fi manufacturer that has been in business for about 25 years, with their first product being the TD101 tube integrated amplifier that they first exhibited back in 1995. Kanor Audio calls themselves a tube specialist as a manufacturer and their product range is quite small. They have three different amplifiers, two different CD players and a phono stage. The AI 1.10 as a project was designed to merge all the benefits of Kanor Audio's previous amplifiers into a pure class A tube based amplifier that had auto bias technology and this required a totally new amplifier topology that was based on KT88 power tubes. There is a very detailed description on the Kanor Audio website with some of the design ideas and detailed choices that they have made. One very interesting thing about it, which is actually common across all Kanor Audio products, is called CMT or Kanor PCB milling technology. Now this is a very interesting manufacturing method because it appears to give them all the benefits of the consistency of using PCBs and all the audio and sonic benefits of using PCBs while at the same time getting all the benefits of point-to-point -point wiring, but point-to-point -point wiring using expensive wiring sheathed in you know, high quality Teflon, low dielectric insulation. So it really is a case of them designing in to, for you to have your cake and be able to eat it. Another interesting Kanor audio technology we see in the AI 1.10 is in the output transformers. In these, Kanor choose to use perma alloy, which is often only seen in amplifiers costing much more than the AI 1.10. And the output transformers are designed to maximize both bandwidth and sound quality. The volume control on the AI 1.10 is also very interesting, not just because it has a very unique and clicky noise when you turn it, which really reminds me of the sound of a mechanical keyboard. The volume control design is of an extremely high quality, again, more in keeping with amplifiers costing much more. It's a very interesting and what they call a special design, which improved the channel separation and the channel volume deviation. Another very interesting feature of the AI 1.10, which was designed in all part of the volume control, is the fact that you can use two of them in monoblock configurations, but without the need for an additional preamp Amplifier. You can use the preamplifier in one to control the volume of both of them in kind of like a master and slave situation. And that is really very, very interesting. The AI 1.10 is available in both silver and black finishes. And the main specification of the amplifier is pure class A, two times 40 watts per channel into either eight or four ohms in ultra linear mode and then two by 20 watts in triode mode again for either four or eight ohms. The spec sheet says the amplifier weighs 26 kilograms but in practice it feels a lot heavier than that. I think large in part due to its really robust and chunky and solid chassis. The overall build quality of the AI 1.10 is very impressive and I'm even impressed by the amplifier top plate which is very thick, sturdy and heavy. As an amplifier it has that core, they really don't make them like this anymore factor about it. The impressive build quality carries over to the rear of the amplifier and all the connectors are reassuringly high quality, feel very well built and very confidence reassuring. Big part of the initial ownership experience of the Kanor Audio AI 1.10 is the unboxing and then the KT88 tube installation 
process. And I really, really enjoyed this because it got me hands on with the amplifier and it got me to take in the lid off the amplifier so I could have a look at the insides and the internals were very, very interesting. If I was to say the design looked pretty simplistic, that would not be a criticism as often with circuit designed, less is more and less is more difficult. I did spot some nice Mundorf capacitors and one pretty damn huge capacitor. But overall, the internal build quality appears excellent and very satisfying. In fact, as I mentioned, the whole overall unboxing and installation experience I found extremely satisfying. So much so, it put me in a really good place that I was pretty sure I was going to really like the sound of the AI 1.10. And I do. I really like it a lot. I really like it. Well, I love it. I absolutely love it. But before we jump into that, I do have a couple of niggles and one of them is with the remote control. Now this is a nice remote control, it works absolutely perfectly, but I do feel that with a black amplifier, we should probably get a black remote control. God, that is really nitpicking. Another nitpick is the material on the back of the remote control. It's kind of rubbery and it's a little bit sticky and I'm not sure I love how that feels in my fingers. Let me put that down because that is extreme <laughs> nitpicking. Uh, one other maybe kind of nitpick is the fact that the AI 1.10 doesn't have a home theater or a home cinema bypass analog input. Now that's far from the end of the world and it's very easy to work around. And I think that's just prevalent, the fact that Kaner Audio are a two channel specialist manufacturer. But I think it's one of the things to point out because when you are like me and you want to have one system combined hi-fi with home cinema, having an amplifier with a home cinema bypass just makes the integration of the two a little bit easier, but all you really need to do is use an input, turn the volume up, and you essentially get pretty much the same thing anyway. I'm really glad to get those niggles out of the way so that I can start to sing the well-deserved praises of the AI 1.10, and there is a lot to sing about. Let's get singing about the sound quality of it because it is phenomenal. I maybe came into this with the preconceived idea that it's a tube amplifier, it's going to sound warm and woolly in the bass. Maybe some tube amplifiers do, but the Kano Audio AI 1.10 does not. There are two different listening modes with the AI 1.10, ultralinear and triode, and they are easy to select between. It's literally just the click of a button. Now in ultralinear mode, we have 40 watts, and with my Kef Reference free speakers, which are 87 decibels sensitivity, you might think that 40 watts is pushing it and kind of on the limit of what we might need, and then 20 watts in triode mode will be nowhere near enough. But in practice, I tested both modes out quite a lot, and in ultralinear mode, there's maybe a smidgen more clarity and control to the sound, and there's definitely a little bit more extension to the upper vocals, but with the exception of that, I didn't really notice any real benefit of listening in ultralinear mode over triode mode. And it's triode mode that to me has got the glory and an absolutely beautiful sound. Yes, there is definitely a little bit more warmth to the sound, but I think most importantly, that does not come at the expense of other things like soundstage clarity or overall clarity or dynamics or frequency extreme impact and control. One of the biggest compliments that I can pay to the AI 1.10 is how it handles bass. And if you watch the song demonstration video, which I'll link up there for you, there's some pretty good examples in there of all manner of different types of bass. Boppy bass, deep bass, very high pressure bass, and yet the AI 1.10 handles that all absolutely perfectly. For a tube amplifier in triode mode with only 20 watts of power on 87 decibel sensitivity speakers, running and playing at up to and over 90 decibels in terms of volume, that's damn right impressive. The mid-range on the AI 1.10 is absolutely fantastic. When the system's set up right, you get a beautiful and full mid-range where both male and female vocals come across distinctly and in a wonderful three-dimensional soundstage. The mid-range of the AI 1.10 is damn right glorious, but it is a tube amplifier, so we may expect that anyway. The treble from the AI 1.10 has been really very interesting because it is extremely fast and detailed, but silky smooth, but only when things have been set up 
well. And that's the next thing that really interested me with the time I've spent with the AI 1.10 because I've been through some pretty big system changes while this amplifier has been here. I've completely rebuilt the music source and I've spent a lot of time messing around with Dirac Live and different frequency response targets. And one of the other huge compliments I wanna to pay to the AI 1.10 is its transparency has easily allowed me to hear all these different differences so that I've been able to work on the sound of the system to achieve an overall sound quality which is the best I've ever had from my review system. So what more praise can you give to an amplifier that's allowed for that? And one other area that I really want to sing the praises of for the AI 1.10 has been the sound stage. Often amplifiers give me very good you know, left to right sound stage and sometimes front to back. But with the AI 1.10 in triode mode, I'm going to say it's given me an extra dimension to the sound. And the reason I'm saying dimension is because if I use the word depth, then I think people would misinterpret what I mean. I think if someone says to you their improved sound stage depth, you're going to imagine a sound from the speakers going beyond the speakers. That's not really what I've been getting with the AI 1.10. I don't really get that from my review system anyway. But by dimension, I mean when you've got something like a lead vocal, which is coming forward and very clearly forward in the mix, and then you've got maybe backing singers or backing you know, instruments or whatever it is, very clearly layered behind them with a sense of space between that lead vocal and between the layerings behind them. That to me is real soundstage depth, or I'm gonna use the word a dimension. Not quite three dimension, but almost, and it could be the trait that people often call holographic, you know, a very holographic sound. And again, I think you can even pick that up from the song demonstration video that I created for you. Just to summarize, I think on the sound quality of the AI 1.10, I'm sure there are other amplifiers out there around this price point that might do bits here and there better, but as an overall package, it really does tick a lot of the boxes that I think most audiophiles are going to want from this type of amplifier. Now, moving on, just mentioned price. I've been singing the praises of the AI 1.10, which means it's going to come with a huge price tag, right? Well, yes and no. The price of the AI 1.10 is 5,990 euros. So it's not a cheap amplifier, but it's far from crazy expensive, and it's far from crazy expensive for the level of sound quality that it produces. And in some regards, it could even be seen as a bit of a bargain because the level of sound quality it produces punches well above its price point. My final thoughts for the Kanor Audio AI 1.10. It's a really great amplifier. It's got some old school aspects about it, but it's got some modern and nice touches about it as well, which I really appreciate. I think it's a great amplifier if you're a first time tube amplifier owner because it has auto bias functionality or, or auto bias technology, just making the ownership of it that much easier. And yet, you've still got the option to do the fun things such as tube rolling, something I've not done, but something I'd love to spend some time and mess around with different tubes. In saying that, the tubes that are included with the AI 1.10, they sound phenomenal and they balance just about perfect for me at least. I must say I've really loved my time with the AI 1.10 and I really love the AI 1.10, it's a great amplifier. It's a great amplifier, yeah, it's a really great amplifier. It's a great amplifier. So I hope you've enjoyed this review and I hope it's been helpful and useful. Don't forget if you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Obviously for more of these types of videos, make sure you check out the unboxing video that I created for the AI 1.10 because that gives you another insight into this absolutely stunning hi-fi amplifier. And there's loads more videos like this in the channel and there's a hell of a lot more coming very, very soon. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye.